At its Ability Summit today, Microsoft unveiled a new adaptive mouse and its set of accessories that go with it. This is following in its history of making accessibility-oriented products like the Xbox Adaptive Controller. Now, we've got four products here, and we were lucky enough to get some hands-on time with this. Individually, these are the Microsoft Adaptive Mouse, the Microsoft Adaptive Mouse Tail, the Microsoft Adaptive Hub, and the button that comes with it. So starting with the mouse, this is basically a square-shaped pointing device that's very, very small. It basically fits under the palm of your hand, and you're supposed to be able to use it with your palm laying flat. With very little effort at all, you'll be able to push this thing along any surface, say your desktop, and also press the mouse buttons or jiggle the scroll wheel. Using an ejector button at the bottom, you can push off the back bumper of the mouse and slide it into the tail. The good thing about the tail here is that you can actually remove the under part of it to make it friendly for either left-handed or right-handed use. This fin is also slightly adjustable so that it, it can be used at a variety of angles. If you're someone like me who just has like, you know, borderline repetitive stress injury or just don't have a very good work setup where you're arm is slightly lifted, this mouse could be so great for that because you don't need to use a lot of muscle strength to push the buttons here. The other piece of this is the Microsoft Adaptive Hub. This is really a switch input device that is meant to work with a variety of different gadgets. You can connect it to your PC or your phone or your tablet and then pair it with a keyboard, mouse or a button with which to then control your device. The hub itself has five 3.5 millimeter audio jacks for a switch device input and it's also got some USB connectors. On its top surface, there is a Bluetooth button as well as a toggle for one of the three profiles you can customize and store on board. In addition to mice, keyboard, or your switch input device, you can also choose to connect to a Microsoft Adaptive button. The button basically holds an eight-directional D-pad, uh, and it can sense presses in each of these eight directions. Microsoft has made three official covers or accessories for the button right now. These are the ones that are uh, in black. You can switch them on or off. There are options for, like I said, the eight-directional uh, version, and then there is a two-button option for people with maybe less mobility, and then there's a joystick option for people who prefer pushing something. Through Microsoft's software, you can program these to perform form actions, macros, keystrokes, and what have you. They're very customizable too. You can map one of these buttons to do something on a long press or a short press. And even more interesting I found is that you can program pauses into these macros. So for example, if you've mapped the top button to do things in Excel, for example, you can have the first push be select a cell. The second push be insert a you know, set of keys that you've already typed into the program and setting it up. And then the third to be enter into a new cell, for example. Or if you prefer, you can use it to reply to a message in Outlook, enter a set phrase, and then with the third push of the same button, send that email. You can connect up to four buttons to the hub at once. You can also set different macros to different profiles. And like I mentioned on the hub, there's a button for you to kind of toggle through depending on which device you're connected to. So that hub really acts as an intermediary between your button and your mouse. And then that, you know, third device that you're connected to. So maybe your laptop or your phone. So while you can pair it with a non-Windows device, you will have to use a PC to set it up and do all of the customizing and that programming. For devices that aren't PCs, for example, your iPad or your Android phone, they will just be reading the hub's input methods as a typical mouse or keyboard. So shortcuts that you would use with a mouse and keyboard on Android would be how you would program them to behave uh, via the hub and, and Windows software. As with many products that are designed with accessibility in mind, it's not just for people with disabilities. It's also something that could appeal to a larger audience. For example, maybe you just want something to run your Adobe macros really quickly. This could be a dedicated device for that. Microsoft also showed us an array of uh, different 3D printed accessories that can be used with the adaptive button. 
These are going to be available at launch uh, through their 3D printing partner Shapeways. And some preset options will be available for ordering and printing through Shapeways, but you know, people can also come up with their own designs and have it printed. For example, uh, one of them was a slightly longer tail for people who want the mouse itself to just have a little bit more of a palm rest. Another option had a deeper finger groove with maybe a cover for the scroll wheel. For someone who, for example, has cerebral palsy and has a lot of involuntary movements that doesn't want to have their fingers accidentally come off of the mouse. Now, all of these devices, the mouse, the hub, and the button are rechargeable and have a battery on board. We don't exactly know what battery life will be like yet. We'll have to wait until closer to launch later this year to find out about that. We also don't know how much the mouse and these accessories will cost just yet. So while it's nice that Microsoft is making an effort to design products for people with different needs in mind, it's also important to note that sometimes these things can be prohibitively expensive. Accessibility shouldn't come with an added price. As always, it's really nice to see Microsoft taking a risk and leading the way in building products for people with different needs. And so for more coverage of Microsoft's inclusive tech space or just information about consumer technology, make sure you subscribe to Engadget. And as always, thank you for watching.